Hi everyone, I'm Nick Olivo, and today we're looking at the new foreground layer in Roll20. This is a new layer that's currently available for Plus and Pro subscribers, and it allows you to do things like hide items beneath a forest canopy or rooftops, and those items become visible when a player moves beneath them. Let's take a look. Before we dive in, I'd just like to thank Roll20 for sponsoring this video. So let's give an example of what this looks like when all is said and done. Here we have my wizard Ralius, and here we have my monk Durlin. And let's say that I've just asked both of them to make perception checks. And I tell Ralius that he's spotted something beneath this tree over here. So Ralius can move his token, and as he gets underneath the tree, the tree vanishes, and he sees that there is a treasure chest beneath the tree. Well, now let's look at it from Durlin's perspective. He's watched Ralius walk off and go underneath this tree. He can't see what's under the tree like Ralius can, but he's been told there's something underneath this cart. So he moves his token over, he gets down on all fours, crawls under the cart, and finds a goblin. So now we roll initiative and we deal with that. And then once the goblin's been dealt with and that treasure chest has been looted, there's this cabin that they've found in the woods Ralius moves inside, steps in, and can now see beneath the roof that was there, and we can see inside there is another golem that we are going to have to roll initiative for, but in the meantime, Thurlin can't see what Ralius is seeing inside the house. So these are some of the cool things that we can do with the foreground layer. So let's see how we actually go about setting this up. So right here, I'm logged into this game as the DM. And you'll notice now we have a new icon over in the toolbar on the lower left called the foreground layer. This works just like every other layer in Roll20. When we click on it, we can place things onto that layer. And you'll notice that when we do that, these other items that are currently on the foreground layer are the ones that have focus. So all we have to do is grab something like here I've got this tree. I can just drag this out place it on the foreground layer and let's resize it make it a little bit bigger and now when we go back to our token layer our characters can move around and move beneath it and when they do move beneath it the item vanishes now it doesn't actually completely vanish its opacity changes and depending upon the background that the item fades into it may be easier or harder to spot it. So you know, this particular item is very light on a lighter background. And so when our token moves beneath it, it seems like it's gone completely. Whereas this rooftop, when we go beneath that, you can still see the roof itself. It makes this room look kind of almost smoky. So we can adjust the opacity settings for each individual token when they vanish. All you have to do is double click on the token. We now have this foreground tab in the token settings and you can increase this or decrease it to determine how much it fades away when somebody steps beneath it. So now if I go back to the token layer and my wizard steps beneath it, it doesn't fade as much. So play around with however much you think. The default is 30%. Honestly, I like that, so I'm probably not going to change most of mine, except for maybe the rooftops. I think that when you're inside a room, inside a building, the item should probably fade almost completely. And then when your character goes inside, they can see pretty much the clear, clean room. But the main question that I had when I first heard about this feature was what does it look like from the other player's perspective when somebody goes underneath an item that's on the foreground layer? So here I've split my screen three ways. On the left is my DM view. In the top right, that is Ralius's player's view. And in the bottom right, that is Durlin's player's view. So if Ralius goes and steps beneath this tree, he can see the treasure chest beneath it. From Durlin's perspective, Ralius has gone underneath the tree and he cannot see the treasure chest. Similarly, if Durlin goes beneath the cart and encounters that goblin, Ralius can't see what's beneath the cart. 
So this gives a whole new level of immersion because some players will encounter things sooner than others. They can call for help or shout out what they've found, but not everything is being revealed to all players simultaneously. Now, one possible challenge that your players may face as they go along here is they may lose their tokens depending upon what you have your opacity for these items set to. And if that happens, all a player has to do is press and hold the V key on the keyboard. And when I do that, you'll notice that Ralius's token becomes very, very prominent in the top right screen because that's his player's screen. He's pressing V right now. He can see himself. So if a player can't find their token, have them press and hold V, their token will light up like this. Additionally, as you can see, the nameplates for each character stay visible even when they're beneath an item on the foreground layer. To enable nameplates like that, what you want to do is double click on the character's token, check the nameplate box, and then make sure that player permissions are set to C. And then the nameplate will be visible to all players and will be visible when the token moves beneath something on the foreground layer. We can click on this hamburger icon up top Yes, that's really what it's called. And you can adjust the foreground layer opacity for yourself. So right now I have it set to 73. I could drop this down to say 50% or so. And then that makes the foreground layer a little less prominent for me as the DM. That doesn't change what it looks like to my players. This is just for my own view. Also, you can toggle the foreground layer off for your players if you don't want them to see it for whatever reason but obviously this video is about that so let's make sure that we've got it on a couple of other things to note you can select any token that you want and move it to the foreground layer if i put on say another tree right here and i accidentally put it on the token layer i can right click say change layer and then move it to the foreground layer no problem you may be wondering, could you take one of your character's tokens and move it to the foreground layer so, like, Darling could climb up on the roof and maybe try to go down the chimney Santa Claus style? And the answer to that is no, because right now players can only control tokens that are on the token layer. If you move Darlin's token to the foreground layer, Darlin's player is no longer able to control or manipulate that token. While you're on the foreground layer, you can select multiple items simultaneously, right click on them and change all of their properties at once. So if we want to change the conditional fade opacity for all of these items I have selected all at the same time, we can do that. And finally, this hidden by darkness option allows you to hide these items that are within the bounds of dynamic lighting. So if I turn this on right now, what you'll see happen is, switching back to my player's views, the rooftop is no longer visible because it is hidden by darkness, because it's within the boundaries of the square I set up for the dynamic lighting layer for the house. Honestly, I don't want to do that for this particular item, so I'm going to go back and turn that off, and now my players can see the rooftop again. One final thing I'll mention is that the items on the foreground layer disappear when a token crosses into their bounding box. So right here, I've got this tree selected, and you'll notice that right here, this square is not actually underneath the tree's branches, but it is within the tree's bounding box. So what that means is if Ralius steps into this square, so right now his player will move into that spot, he can now see underneath that tree, even though technically he's not underneath the tree's branches because the foreground layer is dictated based on the object's bounding box. It's not that big of a deal for this particular item, but I do want to mention this because there are some art assets that have very large bounding boxes that may cause your players to be able to see beneath things way before you intend them to. So for example, I'm going to grab this roof out of this other asset pack that I have and drop it onto the map. And let's make this a little bit bigger. Okay, and you can see here now this roof, like maybe this would be for a shed, the bounding box is way out here. And this isn't the fault of the artist for making it like this, because they made this well before this feature existed. But I just want you to be aware 
that if Ralius steps into this empty square, which is well before the roof, the roof will turn transparent for him and he'll be able to see beneath it. So just be aware that the bounding box of the object is what determines when a token will be able to see beneath it. So there you have it, an overview of the foreground layer in Roll20. I hope you found this video helpful. If you did, please give it a like and consider subscribing. And until next time, folks, have a great day.